All right then gang, so in this video, I'd like to talk about the function type in TypeScript. So first of all, let's create a function and store it inside a variable, which I'm gonna call greet. And this is gonna be an arrow function. And all we'll do is log to the console, hello world. Okay, so a simple function. Now TypeScript will automatically infer that the type of this variable now is going to be a function, much like it inferred strings or booleans or other types before when we defined those. And now in the future, if I tried to say that greet was equal to another type, like a string for example, then it's going to give me an error. And it's going to say that I can't do that because we already have declared that this is going to be of type function. Okay, so we can't do that. Now, instead of defining a value for a specific variable, which will be a function, we don't have to do that. We can explicitly say that this will be a function in the future, much like we did with other types by saying greet colon and then function with a capital F. And notice this time that function, the type is with a capital, unlike string, unlike Boolean or anything else where we didn't use capitals. So function does use a capital. Now, we still can't do this because we're saying that greet should be a function, but what we can do is later on set greet equal to some kind of function. So I can say greet is equal to an arrow function, and inside here I'm just going to say console.log and we'll say hello again. And this is allowed. It lets us do this because we've said greet is a function, okay? So we've already seen as well how we can pass in parameters or arguments into a function and say what types those should be, but let's just go through that again. I'm gonna come down here and create a constant and call it add and set that equal to a new function. And I'm gonna pass in a few parameters into this function. So A, which will be of type number. We've seen this before. This is how we specify the type of the parameters which must be passed in. And B is also gonna be a number. And then down here, we'll just console.log a plus b. So if I try to call this function, I'd say add and then pass in two numbers like five and 10, okay? So if I save it, we should see that in the console, right? 15, which is five plus 10, but I can't pass through 10 as say a string because it must be a number. So. What if I want to pass in maybe an optional parameter? Because at the minute, if I don't pass in one of the parameters, I get an error. Maybe I want one of the parameters to be optional, maybe a third parameter. Well, I can do that. I can say C, and then I'm gonna say that this must be a number or a string. Remember, this is a union type, so we're saying this parameter must be either a number or a string. Now. If I want this to be optional, all I have to do is place a question mark in front of it. And notice when I do that, the error down here goes away. So put a question mark, now it's optional, and now it goes away even though I don't pass it through as a third argument. So when we don't pass it through, the value of this becomes undefined. And I can demo that by saying console.log and output C. And if I save it, we should see undefined over here. Okay, so that's an optional parameter. Likewise, a bit like optional parameters, we can also say that this will have a default value if we don't pass a number through. So I could say that this default value is gonna be equal to 10, okay? Now, at this point, when we use a default value, we don't need this optional parameter because we're saying, okay, well, it's still gonna be optional, but the default parameter is gonna be 10 if they don't pass something in. So we don't tend to use the question mark and the default parameter together, just one or the other. So now, instead of being undefined, if we don't pass through a third argument for C, it will now refer to this default value, which is 10. And if I save and check this out in a browser, we see 10 is logged down here. But if I pass in a third parameter, 20, then I see that one instead. It overrides the default value. And this could be a string, 20, if you wanted it to be, because we said that this is a union type number or string, and that works as well. Okay, so that's the basics of parameters inside functions. And by the way, if you use an optional parameter or default parameter, you should always generally put these at the end 
of the parameters. So always do your required parameters first because they have to be passed in and the optional parameters at the end. Otherwise, these arguments are going to get mixed up. All right. OK, so when we create a function, we sometimes also return a value, right? So let me create another function. I'm going to say const minus is equal to a function where we take in two parameters. A is a number and also B is going to be a number as well. And inside here, we're just going to return A plus B. That's all we're doing. Now, if I then come down here and say let result equal to minus and then passing two numbers like 10 and 7, what will happen is that this right here will become the type of the return value right here. So when a function returns something like this, TypeScript can infer the type that is returned. And therefore, if we hover over this, we can see that result is a number because it's inferred the return type of this function. It's given it a value and it knows that this will be a number. So now if we try to say that result later on was equal to something else like a string, we can't do that because we can't change the type. It's automatically inferred the return type and set that type to this where we set it equal to that function. OK, now we can also, if you want to, explicitly declare the type or return type rather of a function up here. And we do that after the function parentheses right here by adding a colon and then the return type number. Now, we don't need to do that because TypeScript is automatically inferring the return type. So we don't need to do it. But I have seen it in some cases and I sometimes use it as well explicitly just to show to other developers if we have a bigger function that, look, this function is going to return a number, right? So we can see that at a glance. Now, what if we don't return something like this function right here, because this just logs something to the console? Well, it still technically returns a value and it returns a value called void. And if we hover over this, we can see this void keyword. If you look to the right of this thing that's popped up on the screen over here, it says it returns void at the end. So that would be like us saying explicitly right here, void. So a function in TypeScript returns this void value when we don't actually return something. And it basically represents a complete lack of return value. Now, when this is compiled into JavaScript, that will become undefined. But in TypeScript, void is completely separate to undefined. Undefined would be like before when we had an optional parameter over here. And if we didn't pass something through, it would become undefined. Right. Void is a complete lack of any kind of value. Now, that probably sounds a bit foggy, but don't get bogged down too much with that. Now, we'll probably see more examples of using void and undefined in future lessons. But now, hopefully you have a better understanding of how function types work in TypeScript.